O'Reilly and Kimmy show at Spooky Empire's Celebrity Room. This is where you can meet people who have been on television, movies, or maybe even sung a song or two on the charts. Matter of fact, I'm with somebody right now, David Naughton. I know you always get asked probably about American Werewolf, but you actually charted on the top 40. Yeah, I did. I was uh, back, back in the, gosh, in the 1970s. I remember them. Yeah, uh, I was um, cast to play, let's see, what was the character? Billy Minucci in a show called Making It, which was a series, a TV series. So I had inquired about the, uh, the title song because I was coming right off this Dr. Pepper studio work where I was singing the jingle. And I thought, gee, you know, what's the song, the title song? Make a long story short, I auditioned for, this, for the show uh, and got that role, but I also had to audition for the song with the, with the writers who were very, uh, you know, hot and up and not up and coming, very established. This was guys who, uh, Dino Fakaris and, and Freddie Perrin, who had recorded Shake Your Groove Thing with Peaches and Herb, Reunited. Those were these hit songs for them. So I went to their studio and said, you know, I wanted to have an opportunity to do the, the song that they were working on for making it. And they went, well, it's sort of pre-recorded, and we're already thinking of the, you know, uh, Frankie Valley was going to do it. Yeah. I went, well, uh, I'd like to give it a shot because it's about, you know, I'm playing the character, and it's sort of like, anyway. So to make a long story short, I sang a few bars, and he goes, where are you from? I said, I'm from Connecticut. He goes, sounds a bit too Connecticut. I went, I said, I went to school in Philly. He goes, give me Philly. Really? I went Philly. I went, okay, Philly, I'm making it. Anyway, I recorded the song. Where, do you remember when you first heard it on the radio, where you were? Oh, gosh, yeah, you know, I just, uh, well, more, you know, the, the big shock for us was when the series was going to premiere okay. to be on ABC and to see that it would be all in one. You know, we we're going to see ourselves. The song was going to be in the titles. So uh, that was a big night. You know, this was like February of 1979, a party at our house with all the cast and, you know, thinking, oh, we're going to be on for years. <laughs> You know, I think that's something to point out to people who are thinking about going into acting. You have to realize that it may end at any moment, right? It's in the moment, basically. It really is. You know, particularly when you're doing network television, the new series, well, you know, the time slot that you have is so important. And even now, you know, with cable shows, there's so much more uh, product out there. You really don't know. As good a product as you have, you don't know if you're going to find an audience and if the people that are putting on and producing the show are going to be behind you once the show is made. There are no promises, you know, no guarantees. You just uh, really live for the moment. Did you know they were going to cancel the show ahead of time, or did it just somebody call you and go, it's over? Yeah, you, you really don't know. You, you're wondering if they're going to pull the plug while you're still in production. You know, we had a guarantee of 13 episodes, which was unusual. We didn't do a pilot for our show. This was back when, you know, people could just get shows made and have orders of 13 at a time. So it was a pretty neat gig. It was one of my biggest gigs of all time up until that point was not only am I, you know, was going to be uh, under contract for, with Dr. Pepper, I had this series for 13 episodes, and I got this record deal all in about a period of about a couple of months. So it was a particularly cool time, uh, but yeah, no guarantees. And jump, just going all over the scatter here, questions. When you did the Dr. Pepper commercial, how long, how many takes do you remember? How long did it take? Was it a two-day process? Was it a, a week? Well, no, you know, initially, and this was one of my first kind of big breaks. Uh, I was in New York auditioning, and it was a dance audition, and I didn't really think of myself as a dancer and tried to prove it every time. I, but but in, in any case, I was cast to shoot three commercials, and if you're ready for this, 22-day shoot for a 60 and 230 seconds. So it's two minutes of of commercials, but a 22-day shoot, particularly because there was so much travel. We started in New York, finished in San Francisco, so there'd be segments of like 10 seconds in a city and uh, 10 seconds at a time. And in those 10-second segments, we would take the entire day to shoot. We'd do over 100 takes of a dance sequence to shoot, to play back. Um, so it was a real workout, but at the time, you know, I was a kid. I was in my 20s going, is that it? You know, I can do 100 more takes. You know, I was really wild. And was it a different pace for the film when you when you did American Werewolf? Was that slower in comparison to the television work or the commercial work? Uh, well, certainly, you know, you have the luxury of time. Uh, you know, it's a you're you're working with a budget uh, with a writer director like John Landis, who had the luxury of taking all the time he needed to get his movie made. So, 
uh, it was particularly unique was working with him. He had all the say. It wasn't like a committee. You know, you work in television, you hear about, you know, network executives coming down. When you work in commercials, there's a whole group of uh, advertising people that have their input all the time, and they're on the set. With this movie, it was just the man behind the camera, John Landis, and he was the guy. Uh, so we had the luxury of not having to try to you know, satisfy a whole committee. So would that be probably the best working experience of all of the history? Well, I mean, each, each kind of thing was, once the Dr. Pepper commercials hit on the air, uh, the next year we had hundreds of people trying to come and audition for them. So I mean, there was, there was certainly that sort of, you know, f that heat of uh, wanting to be in one of those spots. They became kind of a cool thing. So, uh, you know, that was particularly unique. Uh, with this werewolf movie, we didn't really know how the effects were going to come. How how was Rick Baker, who was unknown at the time, how was his effects going to be? We were off in London making this little werewolf movie. You know, uh, we were uh, un unbothered by all, any sort of studio pressure. It was just this little group of uh, you know independent filmmakers. Did, did Landis say watch old werewolf movies, watch uh, Lon Chaney Jr. stuff, did, or did you do it on your own or avoid all of that? No, it was certainly you know we we even reference it in the film you know, and so it would be, you know, it's sort of you know required reading and viewing to go. I think maybe we ought to see the movies that we're talking about because they, it inspires our characters. As an actor, you sort of want to know and be informed as best you can. So, yeah, I made a point of checking out those movies and was going like, hey, what's the big deal? You know? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to let you get back to your fans here that are in line. Tomorrow, this show's going to be uploaded late Friday night. Saturday and Sunday, please come by, talk to David. You can talk about American Werewolf, commercials, television, I'm sure. He may even sing. I can't guarantee that. Who knows? Uh, it, you know. it, okay, uh, throw out that request. <laughs> All here at Spooky Empire at the Wyndham Resort. It's beautiful. Please come out, visit. He's right next to Butch Patrick, another nice person to talk to. You'll have a good time. Thank you, David, for being on the Riley and Kimmy Show. My pleasure. Thank you. Show.